thank you so much, Io, and good morning, oneness, and to all those who may be joining us virtually. You know, we're here to remember who and whose we are this day. And we're going to begin by exploring April's theme called Stepping into the Unknown through the metaphysical perspective on uh, the globally uh, known Easter story. Now, in honor of the timeless truth that there is only one life, one mind, one heart, I would like to begin today by lighting this unity candle. In honor of the lives of one humanity rising consciously together in this truth. Now, I know that walking the spiritual path is rich and rewarding. It's also vulnerable and revealing. And it can feel never fast enough and sometimes never slow enough. And often, in my experience, much too serious adventure. So it is for that reason I would like to begin this high holy celebration of life and eternal life by including a little furry symbol dear to our hearts. Now, I'm not quite sure where the Easter Bunny went uh, to school. Um, oh, yes, I remember John Hopkins University, of course. Do you know what happened to the Easter Bunny when he got uh, expelled? That was it. I just gave you the punchline. <laughs> oh, jokes aren't always uh, smooth and easy, are they? You know, it is said that in order to live, uh, to rise fully up, to touch the sky, um, we must laugh, you know, perhaps even groan a little, and we must not be afraid of death. If our spirit is eternal in the one, then we are immortal, just not able to always access or orchestrate our next yet to be. This being true, the cycle of birth, death is ongoing while living in this temporal world of condition. I'm sure you would agree. But can we be open to allow this natural creative process happen then as it does in order to feel more alive than we do now? Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder, created the following as one of the statements found within the Declaration of Principles upon which uh, he compromised his text entitled The Science of Mind. He said, we believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. That's such a powerful image which calls forth our faith, except when we cannot figure out the how or why of our life's unfoldment. And when we find ourselves in this permanent ping pong game from faith to fear and back to faith again, can we bookmark the page that says, we live in a spiritual system operating through the divine order of the law of its natural being as a spiritual being within which is sourced an infinite creative resource to manifest whatever reality we choose. Can we just rip that page out and tuck it inside our hearts? You know, as today we are celebrating the gifts given each of us over millennial through the biblical story of the death and resurrection of a master teacher named Jesus, the Christ. And I would like to begin with a metaphysical interpretation of the previous Sunday of what for many faith traditions is known as Palm Sunday. In doing this, I'd like to use the context from expectation to disappointment to disillusionment. Now, the Palm Sunday story displays the transition from expectation to disappointment in technicolor, the triumph becomes a trial and the trial becomes an execution. At the start, the crowds embrace Jesus with dopamine levels soaring and shouting, save us now. As soon as Jesus turns out to be something other than the savior they expect, their hosannas morph into crucify him. 
Now we have false gods that we turn uh, to make responsible for changing the conditions of our lives. And when the God of our understanding or imagining does not meet our expectations and instead meets our needs, we become suspect and seek another God. I mean, let's face it, no one wants vegetables when they're craving candy. You know, there's times that we want a God that satisfies our desires, whether or not those align with our true needs. We welcome a God or a philosophy, a teaching, a path into our lives with anticipation, don't we? With expectation. We're laying down cloaks and waving palm branches with all we've got. But when God or the teaching turns out effects that we don't recognize or maybe like, sometimes we just scatter like smoke in the wind. Now, moving into today's message, leave no stone unturned in the creation and experience of our unique journey. It's really about doing our work by knowing that it is the one and only true spiritual path into the sacred expression and experience of life's wholeness and perfection. Having said that, we will continue to back away from doing the work if we think someone else will, or if we want someone else to do it for us. Have you not said, just give me the answer. Tell me what you want to do and I'll do it. Now, if we follow another's lead, advice, example, and not do the work, it takes for us to die to a false belief of ourself so that we may resurrect our truth. Then we will constantly create expectation and disappointment. One cannot metaphysically speak to the death and resurrection story without really weaving in again what preceded it. So just allow me to circle back to Palm Sunday for a moment. One of the most interesting features of this story to me is how much preparation Jesus does do. You know, he lines up everything, making sure to trigger the crowd's expectations. It's like Jesus has hired a peeler agency or something, just indicating that he knows exactly what he is stirring up. But why? Why? Is he trying to disappoint them? Perhaps he is trying to disillusion them. Now, disillusionment is, well, really the loss of an illusion. It is what happens when you take a lie about the world, about yourself, about those you love, about God, and replace it with the truth. Disillusionment comes when God shatters our fantasies, tears down our idols, and dismantles our cardboard cutouts. It occurs when we discover that God does not conform to our expectations, but rather exists as a mystery beyond those expectations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Disillusionment can be a sacred experience that cuts us uh, and our overactive ego down to size by reminding us that our playing small doesn't serve us in this expansive universe. Now, these experiences, yes, are often painful, but never bad because they make us shed the lies we've mistaken for truth. In disillusionment, we find out what is true and what is not true, and we are set free to seek what is, if we dare, to turn away from the false gods where we have placed our power in order to seek the power and presence of God operating within, through, and by means of us. Ultimately, the triumphal entry is not about donkeys and palm branches at all. It's a reminder that placing expectations on God based on our ego wants is a recipe for resentment. But nurturing openness to divine mystery is a framework for faith. We do not view the crucifixion as a great tragedy, but a step toward great victory. Jesus in his words tells us that the message of the crucifixion is very clear. Judas was simply playing a part as a catalyst so that Jesus could demonstrate the unreality of death. 
Now, if we use this as a metaphor around the belief we have in separation, that which we name Judas in our lives won't be able to stop us dead in our tracks. And we will be able to uh, consciously choose to ride the waves of discovery of our humanity, our divinity, and our immortality all together. I like to look at immortality as being the ability each and every one of us have to understand and appreciate that there is never an ending to the story. The opportunity for us to enjoy what is present and what is there before us is really, to me, what the story of Easter is all about. It's about rising above the conditions we see in our lives and understanding that they are temporary, although they may, may feel written in stone. Now, I have another um, Easter story for you involving the bunny. So here we go. A bald man was cruising along the freeway when he noticed the Easter bunny hopping along in the middle of the road. He quickly swerved to avoid hitting the Easter bunny, but unfortunately, the Easter bunny jumped right in front of his truck. The Easter bunny and his basket full of chocolate Easter eggs went flying all over the highway. The bald man driving, being the type of guy that cares for animals, pulled over to the side of the freeway and got out to see what had become of the Easter bunny. Much to his dismay, the colorful bunny was stone cold dead. The driver felt so guilty and began to cry out loud. Just at that moment, a beautiful woman was driving down the same freeway and saw the man crying on the side of the road and she pulled over and she jumped out of her car and asked the man what was the matter. Oh, I feel so terrible, he explained. I accidentally ran over the Easter bunny and now he's dead. There may not be an Easter ever again because of me. I just don't know what to do. Well, the beautiful woman told the bald man not to worry. She knew exactly what to do and thought she could bring the bunny back to life. So she went to her car and pulled out a very weird looking spray can that the bald man had never seen before. <clears throat> she walked over to the limp dead bunny and sprayed the entire contents of the can onto this little furry animal. Miraculously, the Easter bunny came back to life, jumped up, picked up all the spilled Easter eggs and Easter candy, waved its lucky foot at the bald man and the beautiful lady and hopped on down the road. 50 meters away, the Easter bunny stopped, turned around, waved and hopped on down the road another 50 meters, turned, waved and hopped on down another 50 meters again. Well, the bald man was absolutely astonished. He said to the beautiful woman, what in good heaven's name is in your spray can? What was it that you sprayed on the Easter bunny to make him rise and come back to life? Well, the woman turned the can around so the man could read the label. And it said, hairspray restores life to dead hairs, adds a permanent wave. Well, I told you life was about laughing and sometimes groaning. You know, perhaps this Holy Week will mark the place in your story when you yourself commit to restore life to those places in you that feel dead or where you made a conscious decision to allow something within you that brings you a sense of sacred connection with life to die. What part of me, I ask, needs to be resurrected and what part of me needs to die today? And what part of me has been hanging on to the cross far too long? Well, one of the well-known artists in the New Thought movement who was actually performed here as a guest artist, Mr. Jamie Lula, wrote a piece on Facebook not too long ago, Sherry. I'm going to sing at a memorial tomorrow for one of my sweet teens, who at the ripe old age of 26, decided his life was no longer worth living and walked in front of a train. My heart shattered when I heard of this tra tragedy. He said, I have felt like my life was not worth living for
for various reasons many times. And someone who has never experienced these feelings cannot understand what it is to feel this way. He continues to say, I know, I know feelings aren't facts. And when I have felt that way for whatever reason, there seems to be only one solution. I've not taken that option, regardless of what I have felt. I've learned how to be with the feelings. Not well so much of the time, but I stay. And I am grateful I have chosen to stay because regardless, life is beautiful. Life is a blessing. I am a blessing, even when I don't feel like it. When I read this, I ask myself, so what part of me do I need to take off the cross? What part of me no longer serves this greater good? And Jamie concludes his post with saying, so for my sweet souls of our brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, allies and others who walk in front of that train, he says, I love you. I honor you. And I hold you for your greatest next yet to be. And may your next breath be holy. May your next steps be within. And may your love find you waiting. May your heaven be found again. And I know that you and I have touched into the sadness and pain of our brothers and sisters of varying races and religions and orientations who have been belittled and berated in, uh, and beholding to a norm that is not normal or healthy. So I ask myself as I ask you, how will my decisions to leave no stone unturned in my own life make a difference in a world full of diverse expressions and seeming paradox with no answers in sight? We are not built on sand. Our foundation, however, is written in stone. So what is ours to do? How do we leave no stone unturned? I can just share from my own experience that I allow that which is not life affirming to die so that I may be less resistant and more open to new life, the mystery revealing itself in my expression of who I am being I carry that secret place of the most high wherever I go by being in the present. <laughs> there is no place other than that, uh, which is within me, where I go to pray. It's here. And there's only one point of contact within my convictions, and that is within my own self, within my own soul. So I ask you, where in your life are you stuck in embracing your own humanity? May we take action today and not leaving that stone unturned. And let us right now shift our awareness by inviting in the guidance of spirit or divine wisdom within by receiving, not resisting, the infinite creative intelligence. So I ask you to take one more cleansing breath as we did in the beginning, as we were honoring those um, breaths of faith and sense the presence of that love within and around you and present in, in inside your soul right now. Just relax wherever you are. Close your eyes just for a moment if you wish. Knowing that spirit is breathing you and feeling the sensation of any and all tension releasing from your body. A few questions within the time we have this moment. And just listen and be receptive without judgment or analysis. I ask you and listen, what is spirit's highest vision for me to have a full life? What is spirit's highest vision for me living, experiencing through my expression a full life? What must I become to empower this vision this day? What must I become to empower this vision this day? And what must I let die? Allowing the light of truth to raise me up. What is it I must let die? Allowing the light of truth to raise me up. Take another deep breath with me. 
You know, as the story continues in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus wrestled with his own fears and embraced his own divinity. He goes up to pray, leaving others in the garden, and he comes down and sees others are sleeping. You know, he did this three times. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Often our ego has us fall asleep when we are intending and taking action to awaken to our Christ consciousness. And I think Jesus, Jesus's defining moment came in this garden. And he knew that the Father and he were one. And that knowing remained with him. And then he knew what was his to do. So live our lives fully, express our humanity fully, embrace our divine humanity fully, even when and most especially in the muck, in those times when we feel like giving up or crucifying ourselves or another, or when we can't see the forest for the trees, let alone our next step. May we remember to move past disappointment from expectations in our false God and pause on disillusionment, knowing that we have the presence and capacity to let go of the illusion of less than. And remember that death is an unreality and that the promise of resurrection cannot be found in books alone, but in the overturning of every leaf in springtime. It shall all come to pass. All adversity, uncomfortableness, unappreciation or suppressed aspects of self will come to pass on the path of self-awareness and love. Just like all wonderful, great experiences, people and achievements come to pass in order to create a void which will never remain. Neither the Messiah nor the God of understanding is our answer to a life of meaning. You and I have been put here as the vessel through which, as which the divine expresses and experiences itself. This is ours to remember, not just at this time of year when the world celebrates the Holy Week, but in all those many holy moments we mistakenly describe as ordinary or without meaning. Life is precious just as it is. We are precious just as we are. Let us rise up to the spirit inside. And so it is. Amen.